Good afternoon and thank you for tuning in to Alamance Battleground for our cannon demonstration for our anniversary event. You'll notice that we are all dressed similarly. We know that Governor Tryon is using sailors to man the artillery. In fact, he says as much in a comment in his campaign journal when he's in Bethabara a few weeks after the battle. Sailors aboard ship are going to spend hours every day drilling with cannon. So when Tryon is putting together a militia, he is quickly going to be able to man those cannon crews with artillery without a whole lot of extra training. Now these sailors are probably going to be merchant sailors and not Royal Navy sailors. Uh, Governor Tryon and a captain, Thomas Hayward of the HMS Martin, uh, have written letters to each other for years. Hayward complains that sailors are deserting ship and he wants Trine and the assembly to pass some laws uh, discouraging that and so it seems unlikely that uh, Hayward is going to have extra men to spare to send on a militia campaign inward. Sailors commonly wearing a blue or red jacket, sometimes single-breasted, sometimes double-breasted. That jacket is going to protect them from uh, the elements while they're out on the sea. We've got trousers. Uh, sailors are also wearing breeches. It's great aboard ship to climb rigging and do all the daily uh, work that needs to be done. We know that the militia wore whatever clothes they had, so it's safe to assume that the sailors that are here are also just going to be wearing the clothes that they would normally be wearing. The artillery piece is a three pounder. Uh, which means that it fires a three-pound cannonball. Governor Tryon has two types of cannons with him. He pulls six naval swivel guns off of Fort Johnston, and that fires a half-pound ball. The one behind me is a three-pound cannon. He gets two of those from General Gage in New York. Uh, so General Gage sends him colors, cannons, uh, and ammunition and gunpowder. Now, aboard a ship, uh, or if you're firing at a fort, a cannonball is a great idea, but on a battlefield, one solid shot isn't the best way to go. So here at the battle, they would be using grape shot or canister shot. In either case, it's a tube or a bag that's filled with uh, shot, uh, some type of projectiles, and so it uh, acts more like a shotgun versus a um, one solid bullet. Now let's take a look at some of the tools that we have here. Uh, you'll see a worm, which is a double-ended corkscrew that we'll use to pull debris out of the bore. There's a sponge, uh, which has a wooden pole uh, with a wool sponge on one end and a rammer on the other. We'll wet that wool sponge and use it to swab out the bore uh, as well as pushing the cartridge to the back of the tube. There's a cartridge pouch, priming wire, and thumb stall. So that pouch holds the fuses for the cannon. The priming wire is used to puncture the gunpowder cartridge. The thumb stall is used to uh, tend the vent and make an airtight seal. Uh, in the very back, you can probably see a blue limber chest and that safely holds the cartridges and the shot. You're gonna to wanna to keep that gunpowder away from the cannon. You'll also see a lens stock with a slow match. And so that slow match is rope that has been soaked in saltpeter, which allows it to smolder like a coal and will be used to light the fuse. We are going to show you how to load and fire our three pound cannon. Uh, Governor Tryon, as I mentioned, gets two of them from General Gage in New York. Now we're going to practice the steps with the captain giving the commands, and I will explain each step. Advance worm, search piece. Uh, Andrew handling the worm, he places it next to the muzzle of the cannon. Uh, before we load it, we need to make sure that the cannon is safe to load. Michael is going to use a thumb stall to protect his hand and cover the vent of the cannon. Uh, the vent is a hole on top of the cannon that goes down into the bore. He will hold his thumb down firmly during the rest of the loading process. Advance the sponge, sponge the piece. 
You can see Will holding the sponge. He'll dip it into a bucket of water and place it next to the muzzle of the cannon. Will is going to push the wet sponge down the bore to extinguish any embers. Now we all learned in school that fire needs three things to work, fuel, heat, and oxygen. And the first part of the drill is making sure that the cannon is safe. When Andrew used the worm, he removed any fuel that might be inside the cannon. When Will used the cold, wet sponge, he removed any heat left in the barrel. When Michael used his thumb over the vent uh, and Will pulled out the sponge, it created a vacuum, which means that there's no more oxygen inside. Handle cartridge. Behind the gun, from a distance, you'll see Paul uh, next to it with a blue limber chest. The limber chest holds gunpowder cartridges as well as shot. At this command, Paul will run up and hand off a live round to Andrew, who has set their worm against the cannon. Andrew will take the cartridge and place it near the muzzle. Andrew will place the cartridge in the bore and pick the worm back up. Ram down cartridge. Will will take the rammer, which is the opposite end of the sponge, and push the cartridge all the way down to the back of the cannon tube. Prime. At the command of prime, Michael will take a metal pick and he'll put it down the bore and break open that bag of gunpowder. He will then take a smaller cartridge and pour gunpowder on top of the vent to create a fuse. Ready? At ready, the captain, Bren, will raise his sword, which alerts the artillery and other militia officers that the cannon is ready to fire. Fire! At the command of fire, David will take the linstock and the slow match uh, and touch it to the fuse to ignite the charge. The gun crew will now load the cannon and they'll be doing it at the speed you would have seen in the 18th century here at the Battle of Alamance. Ram down cartridge. Prime. Ready? Fire! Advance worm! Search peace! Ten bit! Advance fun! Fun peace! The artillery would have kept up this rate of fire for the first 45 minutes of the battle until the militia are given orders to get involved. Governor Tryon realizes how important artillery is going to be as his militia is outnumbered almost two to one by regulator forces. Governor Tryon knows that along with the casualties inflicted by the artillery, the psychological effect of having cannons on his side is going to be important for his victory as well. Thank you all for tuning in to watch our virtual cannon firing uh, for our 250th anniversary event. Please stay tuned and watch the rest of our programming. Thank you very much.